insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 32. Headaches, Heroes, and Helping Others. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my talented and insightful co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are we doing today, dear? Doing well, dear. And you? I'm doing fantastic. So we've got uh, some interesting Disney news, some Disney Plus news to talk about today. Uh, we have, uh, someone who bumped their head at, uh, Disneyland and took offense to that. Uh, then we'll talk How about, dare they? <laughs> yeah, then we'll talk about, uh, Robert Downey Jr. reprising his role as Iron Man once again. Uh, then in our entertainment news, we have, uh, Sony's chief, um, uh, basically slamming the door on a Spider-Man movie with Marvel moving forward. Uh, Some thoughts from Robert Pattinson on becoming Batman. And uh, we have a special uh, message from Jimmy Kimmel and uh, his efforts to raise money for ALS research. Then we'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week. So it looks like we've got ourselves another great podcast this week. Uh, Are we ready to get into it? Let's do it. All righty. Go for Disney Detective. So in our first story, Disney Plus obviously is, you know, getting ready to to launch uh, the middle of November. And they uh, seem to still be having um, a a sale for the most part if you sign up for a three-year subscription. Um, They had made this known, um, I guess it was right around the time that the D23 Expo was going on. The uh, discount was only supposed to be available until September 2nd, Um, but it looks like if you are a D23 member already, um, and there are various levels of membership, there's a general, there's a gold and a platinum, Um, and if you actually log on to, if you are a D23 member and you log on to um, your D23 account and you go under offers, It looks like it was still there. And actually, as of yesterday on Friday, I actually logged in because we're general or I should say I'm a general member now. I used to have gold member status and I just didn't renew it, but I still have my general status and it was still there. So So you're a general in the D23 Army. Right. (laughs) I'm just a general now. (laughs) Just a lackey. Um, So, yeah. So if you, you know, you're still thinking about it, it's going to be 33 percent off. Um, for the three years. So it means that you'd be paying $140.97 plus tax uh, for the three years. Um, and I guess you have to pay it all in one sum. I guess it's right, not you're a... Buying the three year you're buying the three year now as opposed to, you know, paying it. So it was, like I said, it was supposed to be available just for uh, up until September 2nd, but I guess, you know, they're still letting it. So has Disney actually acknowledged the extension or said anything about it? Mm-mm, no, they haven't. It, it's just kind of like one of those, oops, it's still there. Well, now, see. I didn't click through to see, you know, even though I still saw it, I didn't try clicking on it to, to actually purchase it. But again, it still showed up under you See, know and this my makes account me wonder so if they if they failed to get the adoption rate that they had hoped for right so they kind of just extended and it they just and left it go and left oh, it go yeah like a but it was shocker. funny because early reports suggested a lot of people because they crashed the d23 site right when people when were trying to, to do it. it yeah so for them i mean disney usually doesn't make marketing mistakes like this if they did it if it's still there it's there for a reason 
Right, right. So, you know, if you, the regular price would be $209.94. So it's a significant, you know, discount. But again, who knows what it's going to, you know, is it still going to be around in three years? And that was something that we kind of talked about. But, you know, they're looking at doing, you know, like 400 plus movies. You're talking 7,000 episodes of various different shows. So they're, they're definitely going to have a lot of content but what, yeah, on it. What they're talking about is a very costly venture mm-hmm. for something that they don't know if it's going to have an uptick at this point in time. Right, right. Um, plus, you look at what you're you're talking about here. They could be a victim of their own success if mm-hmm. this adoption rate of this thirty three percent discount, you know, gets picked up by too much. You know, at this at that point in time, you're dumping this money up front for all this content, right? That you don't know, and you're essentially losing a year's worth of revenue on your subscription stream with this deal. Mm-hmm. So, all right, so they're going to get all the money up front to do the production costs for the first two years. Third year rolls around, what happens? Right. Or it's, you know, all the people that didn't sign up right away, and it's like, oh, well, now I'm interested in signing up. So maybe that's what they're kind of hoping is that, okay, we got this money up front. Right. And that, you know, after people start hearing about the buzz of Because, you know, Disney different needs shows, the money up front because they've got no money, right? Right. They have nothing. They have nothing in the bank. They print their own <laughs> money at this point. They used to, actually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Back in the day. <clears throat> anyway... So what's our next story? So the next story comes a story from Disneyland, it seems. So a woman from Alaska is actually suing the Walt Disney Company, claiming that she suffered sorry, uh, a serious head injury while exiting Space Mountain in Disneyland in California. Uh, The woman apparently struck her head while she was exiting the ride, which had pulled into a maintenance tunnel because of a malfunction. Uh, She's actually seeking $3 million in California federal court. Uh, She claims that the incident occurred uh, December of 2017 after the roller coaster had malfunctioned and the car was actually pulled into a dimly lit maintenance tunnel. Um, She claims that an attendant told riders to watch their step but failed to warn them about the low clearing uh, ceilings. So she reportedly violently struck her head against the concrete ceiling, leaving her feeling dazed and disoriented. Um, And she remained in pain for, you know, uh, severe pain even after she left the park. So, of course, she went to nearby emergency room to get checked out. um, And that's when, you know, the diagnosis of a concussion Uh, and, you know, in her lawsuit, she, you know, later was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury, uh, and permanent impairment requiring intensive continuing treatment. Uh, she and her husband are again, report, uh, asking for 3 million to cover the medical expenses and the lost earning capacity. Um, and the, uh, the reports, uh, she's being, uh, represented by a a law firm in uh, Alaska um, and Fox News, which is where the story came from, had reached out to Disney and the law firm and nobody had, you know, responded yet to to any. uh, And exactly how do you slam your head into the ceiling getting off of a ride? Like, was it really that, you know, like. And did she spend the rest of the day in the park after she did that? Of course she did. Because she didn't go to the emergency room until later. Like, exactly. if you hit your head, they have first aid right there. Yep. Why didn't you go and get yep. checked out then? Why wouldn't you even, this, you know? You know what? This, this is just frivolous lawsuit written all over Oh, absolutely. Here. Absolutely. And you got some schmuck lawyer in Alaska who picked up on this and has decided he's going to make a name for himself mm-hmm. with this. Because what's going to happen is Disney's going to settle outside of court. Right, and they'll settle for, you know... They'll get a million dollars, a million and a half out of them, If probably. that, you know. You know? Like, what were your medical bills? Okay, you know. Or, hey, now you have to go see our doctors. Right. And, you know, let's see what really... And you need to come to California really... to see our doctors. Right, right. Or we'll find somebody out, you know, in Juno. Yeah. To... <laughs> everyone's everyone's trying to make a buck. Like, and, and granted, like, I'm not a Disney fan, so it would... <laughs> 
It would not hurt me at all to see Disney pay $3 million, nor would it hurt Disney's bottom line at all to have to pay $3 million. Right, right. But this is just an example of why our legal system is so screwed up the way it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The fact that you can sue for this and settle out of court and and force a company who is not liable. You know, I'm sure they did everything they could to make Mm -hmm. sure that people were safe on that ride. Right, right. And, like, when you get on a ride like Space Mountain, there's a certain level of risk that you have to assume. Absolutely. There's the warning, you know, no pregnancy, you know, you, you know, women that are pregnant or if you have back injuries or if you have, you know, uh, heart conditions right. or, you know, anything like that. So, you know, and maybe and, and she my had... question would be, how many other people hit their head? Right. Okay. And was she unusually taller than the rest of the people that were getting off right, the ride? Right, right. Or did she have a pre-existing condition that she's failing to tell anybody and right. kind of used it as, oh, let's see, you know, how I can, you know, hurt myself so that we can, you know, right. was it intentional? I'm sure, yeah, well, right. you know, but you never know. You, you never, know? see, in, in my philosophy is assume the worst of people and Abs- rarely yeah. disappoint you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So anyway, on to bigger and better news here right so this was you know this was a yay for for fans of uh iron man and obviously robert downey jr so it looks like he is going to be reprising kind of sort of iron man for a marvel spinoff um and it looks like it's going to be in um in this article it didn't actually mention what the name of the the show was they said it was you know, going to be a uh, Disney Plus spinoff, but we're pretty sure that it's the what if. Right. Um, because we had reported. Because I don't think Ironheart is getting the their own, its own series. Right. It doesn't sound like that's uh, going to happen. Um, but we had reported a couple of weeks ago that, you know, various characters from the MCU were going to be, you know, voicing their characters in the animated series so more than likely we're kind of speculating but that's what it's you know what it looks like it's going to be and he's going to be reprising obviously tony stark but it's going to be more of the uh voiceover capacity of an ai character of himself right. kind of like jarvis um and it's going to be as you mentioned in the iron heart um character storyline right. of of that um, now I didn't know who or what Ironheart was, obviously, because I'm not as Ironheart's fairly new to the comics. Right. Scene. It looks like from this article, it actually says that um, actually only 200, uh, 200, <laughs> 2015. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had any coffee today. Um, and that it was actually created then, and actually had some sort of backlash. Because they felt, you know, people felt that it was an inaccurate portrait of a young black female and that they didn't have enough black female writers right. writing the storyline. Um, so this will be, you know, kind of interesting to to see where, you know, where this goes. Um, it seems that earlier this year, the writers, you know, met with Robert Downey Jr. and, you know, asked if he would, you know be interested in doing this and he you know he gave them you know his approval for it so i guess he realized disney still has some money they didn't give him all their money right right and it's like oh let's see where i can come back from the dead or how i can you know come back and milk that that cow (laughs) some more so you know uh, um you know it would be interesting to to see you know that that series definitely sounds you know interesting and and here's another little you know Got your dollar, you right, know, tease right. to, to come on in and, and see it. So, well, and you know what? He embodies that character. So oh, absolutely. And, you, and it's you couldn't bring someone else back to voice the character because right. it just wouldn't work. Right. Because people would know and you'd be like, ah, this is a cheap knockoff, right. you know? So, right. Cool. Yeah. Well, it'd be good to have him back. Mm hmm. Uh, and that's it for Disney Detective. Yep. This on week. to our regular entertainment news. Our regularly scheduled entertainment <laughs> news. So tell us about Sony Pictures and Spider-Man. So this is kind of a crossover because it's, you know, Spider-Man being the, you know, 
is he part of the MCU? Is he not part of the MCU? So it seems like Sony Pictures Chief basically has, you know, said, you know what, for the moment, the door is closed. Um, so fans were hoping that Spider-Man would be returning to the Marvel, you know, cinematic universe. But basically, he said, no, nah, for now, no. Um, they, you know, so uh, there was a... Um, Entertainment and Technology Summit that Variety was hosting, and the CEO uh, was there, and he said, um, you know, kind of cryptically, you know, said that it's a long life, implying that perhaps in the distant future, maybe the web-slinging hero might swing back into the Disney-owned company, but for now, it doesn't look like they're going to, you know, let Spider-Man go. Um, and he basically said, you know, we have no ill will against, you know, Marvel and Sony. Um, but they basically failed to reach any sort of agreement on the, the terms of any upcoming movie. And so basically that means Tom Holland's Spider-Man won't be returning in any of the follow-up uh, MCU uh, movies. And, you know, so Sony kind of figured, well, you know what, look how well, you know... Spider-Man's doing now, we really don't need, you know, the help from Disney or Marvel, you know, we're kind of, we're doing well, okay. And, you know, to a certain extent, <coughs> that's extremely selfish of them mm -hmm. because it's a, you're doing a disservice to the fans. Oh, absolutely, because now you ha you know, you had all these crossovers, you know, and, you know, obviously the last movie you had all these, you know, different little things thrown in. Now what are you going to do? You're going to kind of wipe off, well, you know. Well, and that's the thing. Like, I blame Disney mm -hmm. first and foremost because Disney shouldn't have engaged in a limited partnership without having something long-term secured. Mm -hmm. And not having something long-term secured, they should not have introduced Spider-Man into the Phase 4 Right. Stuff as tightly unless as they, they did, unless they knew, unless hey, they we have, have a long term a... deal, right, 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 no. And then what happened, you know, based on articles that I had read, was that instead of pursuing a cooperative deal with Sony, Disney basically, you know, were standing their grounds and wanted to buy back the rights of Spider Man. Mm -hmm. It's like that was idiotic that they would even go that route, right? You know, you had a good thing going. They were terrified of sharing the profits on the margins because it was like a right. seventy thirty profit share to Sony on it and they were greedy. They didn't want to give up the profits on mm -hmm. it. So it's like shame on you, Disney, for doing a disservice to the fans for that. Yeah. You shouldn't have set the fans' expectations up like that without having something long term. You shouldn't have gotten greedy by wanting the whole pot to yourself. And it's the fans ultimately who lose here. Mm -hmm. Because Marvel's still going to continue to rake in money for, for Disney. Right. And Spider Man's going to continue to rake in money for Sony. And ultimately, it's the fans that get screwed in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Sony, you know, is doing, you know, very well for themselves in the superhero market. They're working on a second Venom film. Um, and they're. the first one did so well. <laughs> Well, obviously, the first one was terrible. <laughs> oh, looks like. Well, I think it's the second one that, like, the reboot of the. the oh, the Venom. rebooting, the rebooting. Well, they had the first one. I think that was bad. And the then Venom I think... standalone. They've only had one standalone Venom. I thought there were two. No, Venom appeared. In, oh, that's right. He appeared in the one. In the one then, Spider Man series. Well, obviously, they're doing a second one, so they must. Think, you know, well, and that's what Sony does. I mean, they've rebooted Spider Man three times now. So. That is true. Um, you know, and that, you know, obviously with the success of Spider Man into the Spider Verse, Sony and, you know, uh, and Amazon are actually working together um, because they actually worked on the, the Amazon series, The Boys, which we have yet to start watching it's in the queue it's yeah. in our our queue of things to watch so it looks like you know sony and and superheroes they're they're kind of doing okay they're not hurting and you know they're gonna keep going with you know spider-man because obviously he's he's a fan favorite so you know right. they they basically said spider-man was fine before the event movies and did better you know with the event movies and now they have their own universe to you know of characters to, you know, that they haven't even touched on, you know, right. <clears throat> with Spider-Man. So, you know, he, they're not hurting for content. Yeah, no, they've got content, plenty of so. material to work with here, which yeah. is why they Sony had nothing to lose. Right. 
you know, it was it was Disney that had everything to lose, mm-hmm. and they lost everything. Yeah, yeah. Because they got greedy over it. So, so tell us about the Batman. <laughs> so we've been talking about this for for a couple of months now. You know, it was speculation that uh, you know the new Batman was going to be a, a younger version um, from you know the current or, or more recent ones. Um, and so, uh, an article came out, uh, in Variety, uh, where they interviewed, uh, Robert Pattinson, uh, talking about, you know, becoming Batman. And, you know, he, he was saying that, you know, it was mid-May and that was pretty much when all the rumors were coming out. Yep. Uh, he was on a flight and he's sitting there Googling himself because he hadn't really even heard anything and here all these stories are coming out about him doing it. So he thought it was, you know, kind of funny. <laughs> Yeah, that you yeah. know, all of this was was coming out. He was actually um, heading to to France uh, to the the Cannes Film Festival to promote another movie. When everybody was asking him, "Hey, what about Batman?" and he's like, "What are you even talking about?" He hadn't even interviewed for it. Right, right. Uh, so you know, the stories were obviously very premature. Like I said, he hadn't even interviewed. Um, and then, of course, you know, there were all the um, the posts on Twitter saying, you know, you can't do this, he's not right for it, and he's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, But obviously now he can, you know, come out and say that now, obviously, um, you know, he has been picked uh, to be the next um, Batman. It's obviously a a much different role for him. Um, You know, he, he... obviously starred in, you know, had a, a small role, well, not a small role, um, in Har- the Harry Potter films. Um, so a lot of people knew him from that. And then obviously Twilight, you you know, was really where he kind of came to, to light as a heartthrob and, and right, everything. Right. Um, and then he kind of, you know, did a lot of smaller films, more artsy films would you say you know not blockbuster movies you know little things and and stuff like that um and he you know kind of enjoyed doing these these smaller films so now with this it's gonna kind of bring him back into the you know the big blockbuster uh movies that he hasn't really done in a while um he says you know that he's still kind of you know pinching himself thinking that you know he's the next in line after Michael Keaton and Val Kilmer and George Clooney, Christian Bale and Ben Affleck. And, you know, he said that growing up in England, he always watched the Tim Burton movies and, you know, would wear his Batman costume, never thinking someday. Yeah. But, you know, let's be honest. A couple of those names really were not very good. Batman well, movies. yeah. The Val right. Kilmer, George Clooney <laughs> years were not kind to the Batman. <laughs> that franchise. was, that was the, the up and then, you know, yeah. the down. Um, so again, you know, when he was first named as the front runner, like I had mentioned, social media, you know, was kind of like, no, th- there was even a petition <laughs> to have Warner Brothers reconsider saying, you're going to ruin all my childhood dreams if you have him, you know, uh, d- to, you know, being picked and, and stuff. So it was, you know, kind of funny, you know, how, you know, fans of a certain character, you know, just feel so strongly without even seeing, well, and you, know, you know, anything. What? If nothing else, you know, you're going to be bringing emotion out of the fans with this character. If that's the <laughs> Absolutely. reaction you're getting. Absolutely. So, um, again, we really don't know much, um, you know, uh, about where the film is going to be taking place. They're actually going to be start, uh, starting filming this winter and it's supposed to be debuting in 20 June of 2021. Okay. Very cool. And on to Jimmy Kimmel. So Jimmy Kimmel is is one of those guys who, you know, he definitely puts his heart out there um, for for those. Um, And this was something, uh, a story that that came out. So it seems that he announced... uh, this earlier this week that his late night show on ABC would be raising money for ALS research to find a cure and to help patients that are diagnosed with this disease. Um, so he posted a video um, talking about what he was uh, going to be doing and we're going to be able to play that for you now. 
Sure. <laughs> now would be good. Now would be good. Uh, as soon as I find my cursor here. <laughs> I lost my cursor. Uh, there uh, there where'd the mouse is. go? Okay. There it is. Okay. Hi, there I'm go. Jimmy Kimmel, and you know me from our show, Jimmy Kimmel Live, where one of our longtime and most beloved co-workers has been diagnosed with ALS. So to support him and to support others affected by this terrible disease, our gang here at Jimmy Kimmel Live is raising money for ALS research and to help patients who have ALS too. So we ask everyone who comes to the show for donations and they came through in a huge way. Go to kimmel.charitynetwork.com to see everything. There's some really great stuff. We have so many celebrity experiences and so much memorabilia. And I am offering what I believe will be a great experience too. So you and a guest will be my VIP guests at a taping of Jimmy Kimmel Live. You will get round trip airfare to LA. We'll pick you up at the airport. We'll drop you off at the airport. You get a three night so stay at the cool. Hollywood Roosevelt yeah, Hotel. Yeah, so just next you know, us. basically they're, they're, he's the doing show. it, you know, kind of as a go ahead and make a donation or you can, you know, they have different auctions, you know, for, for different uh, memorabilia and, and stuff. So, you know, he was talking that, you know, one of the prizes is to be a guest on his show. He'll fly you out to L.A. You get three nights in a hotel. And after the show, he'll even draw a portrait of you. So there was a funny, you know, thing at the end of it uh, where he has his, his sidekick from the show laying on the couch in the nude you know, being, oh, <laughs> you know, kind of like, you know, Titanic, you know, draw me like your French girls right. type thing. Um, um, and then there's, you know, various things on the website that you can, you know, put in for the auction. So there's a chance to, to meet Norman Reedus, um, to receive a 2020 Harley Davidson. So I thought maybe for you, since you wanted a motorcycle, sure. we'll do that. Uh, you can bid to see uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short in their show uh, that's going around. Um, then there's a, a chance to, you know, have lunch with um, Modern Family star Evic. Uh, Eric Stone Street, um, a one day visit for up to 10 guests for Disneyland, uh, concert tickets, you know, various different things. So it, it's kind of nice that all of these, you know, celebrities have donated either their time or, or items, yeah. you know, to help raise money for, you know, you it's, know. it's nice when you see someone use their celebrity status for mm -hmm. something like this. Absolutely. It's unfortunate that it takes a personal, you know, something that's that personal right. to you to spawn something like mm -hmm. that. Right. I mean, Lord knows ALS has been around for a century now mm -hmm. and known and, and people have been treating it right. for that time. And there are so many different people that come out, you know, you had a couple of years ago that the ice bucket challenge, yep. you know, w was going around that it was kind of started for, for that. Um, you know, and obviously with this, you know, he has a, a person on his staff, you know, who was diagnosed. So that kind of sparked. And that's, you know, know, that's kind of what I'm saying is like, it's unfortunate that it takes someone close to you mm -hmm. to, to be diagnosed with something like this. Right. Uh, to really open your eyes to it sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to take that unfortunate circumstance, capitalizing your celebrity mm -hmm. and then try to raise awareness. I think that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's that's responsible celebrities there. Absolutely, that doing that. absolutely, and and you're doing it for the the right reasons. Yeah, and, and it's and it's know. to help everyone affected mm -hmm. by it. You're not just raising money to pay this person's medical bills. Right, right. It's for research for a greater cause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's great. So that's it for entertainment news. That is it for this week. So let us come back and hear of your insightful pick of the week. I have to turn that back up. <laughs> you can press all the buttons you want, but if the volume's that's, not up. That's right. I pushed the buttons, but I didn't put the slider back up. We can make our own sound. Woo, 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 woo. I'll have to save that one for the blooper <laughs> reel. Anyway, I yield to you for your insightful pick, dear. Uh, so this was actually uh, a show that uh, we had in our entertainment news last week that was going to be uh, available, and we actually did start watching it, and it is Carnival Row, which is on Amazon Prime. There are eight episodes in the first season. Uh, we're on episode 
Six. We're going into episode we six. Five, yeah. yeah, so we're five in. Uh, basically, we're you know we're not really the binge watchy type. We actually like to, you know, take our time. But we've been doing you know like one per watch. night. We'll just watch the whole thing in one week. <laughs> well, but watch we it. don't binge. <laughs> well, no, binge watching is like a whole day of watching. You know, in in one shot. You know, never getting up to. You know, to leave the couch and, you know, so we, we take our time because, again, we go to work and, you know, we come home and we do other things. So <laughs> like this podcast, <laughs> like this podcast, if we weren't doing the podcast, we'd be watching episode six. Right, now. <laughs> right. And we'd be finishing it up this weekend. Um, but anyway, so back to the show. Um, so it's a very interesting dynamic of the show um so you know from from of course the website uh you know it talks about it's a, a growing population of mythical immigrant creatures are struggling to coexist with humans after the creatures exotic homelands are invaded by the empires of man the creatures are forbidden to live love or fly with freedom but hope lives in the darkness um, a human detective, uh, Philo, who is played by um, Orlando Bloom, and a refugee fairy vignette rekindle a dangerous affair despite being in an increasingly intolerant society. Vignette has a secret that endangers Philo's world during his most important case yet, a string of gruesome murders that are threatening the uneasy peace of the row. Um, it's considered an urban fantasy and new, uh, neo noir, um, which it has that dark, you know, steampunky look to it. it. It looks like it's, I guess, like turn of the century, quote unquote, England, but it's not England, you know, but it has that. Dirty, nasty, disgusting, <laughs> industrial look like England. Yeah, you yeah. know, and and it, you know, you you see the, the struggle of power, you know, obviously between you know these refugees who they really had no choice if they wanted to live, they had to come here, and you have people who were opera singers and were doctors, you know, in their own lands, and you know come here and now they're you know peasants and you know butchers and you know yeah, it's, or it's, it's a classic tale of of refugee immigration yeah and it and it definitely speaks a lot to our society today really and and the way things are and and you know you have the people that are sympathetic um you know and then you have the people that are just very intolerant of of it and you know they, there was a, a scene you know that we watched uh, yesterday where this one woman you know starts speaking and you think oh she's you know she's up for the you know she's tolerant she you know she understands because her mother was once considered an immigrant even though she was human um, you know she came from a different part of the world where she had darker skin and you know and and you you know, she went through problems, but then was finally accepted. And now we have all these, you know, we have the fairies and we have this and that. And you think, oh, OK, she's going to be tolerant of them. And the turning point is she's not, right. you know, they're different. They don't have the same biology as we do. And they don't have the same blood that we do. And, you know, and and it puts that twist in that you're like, Ooh, damn! She's she's mean. <laughs> I don't yeah, like so her. Yeah, you, so you clearly see a line of the the Democrats and the Republicans. Yeah, it's in their parliamentary sessions. Yeah, in the show. It, exactly. You can definitely see that that twist, and um, you know, and there's all these different subplots and all these different you know characters that they're introducing, and you know, they do flashbacks and and different things, and um. You know, and we've we've enjoyed it. You know, it, it, the last couple of episodes have left stuff, you know, at the end go, oh, that was, was kind of sad. Yeah. Like, you know, it hasn't had the, a happy the, ending. The show you is, know. is very complicated. There's mm -hmm. a lot of plot lines going on. I'm curious to see how they sum them up at the end. Right, because we only have three episodes right. and, left to, and you're to not this. very deep into some of these plot lines either. Right. So it'll be nice to see where they go with them. Mm -hmm. um, the cinematography is is very well done. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, you really capture this fantasy world 
Uh, even the costuming, the makeup. And the special effects, um, you know, it like the fairies that are flying. Yeah. It's it's amazing. It's, and, it's very and convincing. And the, I guess, the Minotaur type characters. The pucks. And then you have the pucks and, you know, very yeah. well done, you know, w- with everything. So yeah. Very cool. Good pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is a documentary, but it's a documentary (laughs) about a really cheesy film. Awesome. Tell us about it. So we're all familiar with the uh, Fantastic Four and the movies that came out with uh, Chris Evans, Mm -hmm. you know, as as the Torch and all those guys. So before those blockbuster special effects extravaganzas came out, um, another film came out that was produced by Roger Corman films. Now, Roger Corman films are famous for producing ultra low budget movies. Okay. So this documentary talks about the entire process and it's called doomed the untold story of Roger Corman's fantastic four. Uh, Doomed explores the circumstances surrounding the legendary cult classic Roger Corman film, The Fantastic Four. In 1994, Mr. Corman was asked to produce this classic story on a small budget. That budget being a million dollars. Wow. Okay. The film was ultimately shelved prior to distribution, but a VHS copy was mysteriously leaked, and the movie became a must-have by all. (laughs) We have it, by the way, just for the record. <laughs> um, see, now we're going to have to, you know, watch it sometime and, and just uh, see how bad it really yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Is it as bad as the holiday special? It's along those lines oh, of the Star Wars wow. holiday special. So yeah. we really need to have, like, some alcohol yeah. while we're watching yeah. it to enjoy yeah. it. Okay, okay, I gotcha. Uh, all the fascinating stories around this lost film are told through in-depth interviews with the cast and crew. Uh, Blu-ray specials uh, include features of the crew panel and uh, some goofing off stuff and things like that. Um, the film, the the documentary itself that I watched, goes into the details and sort of explains some of the dark underbellies of um, the licensing okay. associated with it, which is kind of poignant given the Sony story we talked right, about right, earlier. Right. Right. Where this one production company acquired the rights to make a Fantastic Four movie, but they had to make it, or it had to be in production by a certain date, or else they'd lose their rights. Well, this production company happened to get wind that Marvel was planning on producing a blockbuster movie. Okay. So they basically went out, they invested a million dollars, gave it to... Roger Corman said, make this movie. It has to be produced in this time frame. Okay. Regardless of what the quality was. And they took it seriously. The actors, the cast, the crew, special effects, everything. Mm -hmm. And they went about it, making it a low budget movie. Mm -hmm. There was never an intent to release the movie. It was basically going to be held as leverage. Okay. So they could then sell the rights back to Sony or Marvel, whoever was going to do it. Whoever was going to do it. Okay. When they wanted to make their blockbuster. And that's exactly what happened they sold it and they made a profit that way. Okay. But by the time they got to that point, the film had already been done. The actors had been on the road at conventions actually promoting this. They had promoted it at San Diego Comic Con. Oh, wow. Um, but it was never officially released in theaters. They did make a VHS version, but all the film, everything, negatives and everything were confiscated uh, once the the owner lost the rights to it. Okay. And the one thing that was really freaky, the special effects were were ultra cheesy. I mean, almost like video game special effects. Okay, okay. But for The Thing, who was one of the main characters in Fantastic Four, Mm -hmm. they had made an articulated... A robo articulated face for. Okay. And it had like 24 points of articulation in the face. So it was very expressionable. Okay. But the way they animated that when it spoke was the creepiest thing you could see <laughs> on screen. It really was. Okay. It was like a bad face actor or something okay, like that. Okay. Okay. Um, and some of the other stuff that they did in there, like at the end of the movie, Reed Richards and, and, uh, oh, 
I forget what the other character's name is. They get married. Right, right. And they're driving off in a limo, and you see this big, wiry arm that's supposed to be Mr. Fantastic waving behind them. Uh Uh-huh. And it just looks so cheesy. It's just, it it was terrible. It really was. (laughs) See, now now we're going to have to watch it. Yeah, we are. We're going to have to watch it. And then I'll watch the documentary, you know, afterwards to to see all the the little things, you know, that Uh went on in it. But the documentary was cool because it was an interesting look behind the scenes of movie making on a low budget. Budget, mm-hmm. uh, how the wheeling and dealing happened. You had some agents that were in there. So it was kind of an entertaining take on the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely worth watching and streaming on Amazon Prime now. Um, I think that was all we had mm-hmm. for yeah. today. Uh, before we did go, I want to I wanna give you a highlight there. We never turned your ears on, by the way. So let's uh, turn your ears on so everyone can see what your ears do. I got to find my button. There you go. Because <laughs> we had those last week, that prop last week, and we never actually took advantage of it. <laughs> right. So I had to take advantage of it today. Oh, All wow. Right. I can see it in my... Ooh, Look at that. Yeah, I can see, see? the reflection. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. They were the 50th anniversary Haunted Mansioneers. Yes, they are. And where'd you get those? I got them from you. Wow. I must be an awesome husband. You are an awesome husband. So obviously for those that that haven't caught on, I am obviously a very, uh, not only a Disney fan, but the Haunted Mansion is probably my all-time favorite. Um, and as we've talked about many times, there's you know it's celebrating its 50th anniversary. Yep. And various retail stores are actually carrying limited edition items. So you have uh, a store um, called Box Lunch, um, but they're also on online if you don't have any near you. Uh, the store Hot Topic is selling Haunted Mansion stuff, and Target actually came out. Some of them. Is. Some of them. <laughs> um, well, I think, I think, honestly, I think they all got them i just don't think we went we went running around to different targets yesterday so that that's why we we say that i i ended up hitting the one near work and got a couple of things we ended up hitting one of the ones near our house and they had absolutely nothing and when we asked people about it they were like we don't know what you're talking about (laughs) yeah well well informed marketing campaign yeah so you know and and i'm part of different Haunted Mansion groups on Facebook and the one person was like, wow, I guess there's no Haunted Mansion fans, you know, in this neck of the woods because I basically wiped out like three right. targets right, with, right. with everything and now all that stuff's up on ebay yeah yeah so that that's the unfortunate part is for the fans that really you know like I don't want everything that came out I don't think. But you wouldn't turn down um, anything. But I did end up buying, you know, like originally there were things that I wasn't going to buy. And when I saw them, I was like, oh, I you have to. You have to avail yourself of the opportunity. <sighs> so I did. So there's really only like one other thing that's out that I know of that I want. But if I find the others, I guess I'll, you know. Okay. So, yeah, there's my obsession. So. eBay, here we come. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I think that's it for us for today. Yeah. We'll be back next week with uh, another great podcast. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.